Hello, hello, and welcome to another video. Today, we are going to have a look at the June release from Picket Fence Studios, starting with Do Not Take Any Shit. Quite to the point. Then we have Cresting Wave. There's Baker's Twine. This one is called Fruit Delicious. It's in, uh, this one is one of those you can stamp. Uh, it's like a continuous stamp. This one is called Arctic Deer and has a cute little dog and a sweet sentiment, which I completely agree with. This is more fancy sentiment and it's like a follow on sentiment uh, or stamp set from the first one called Fancy Sentiments. This is the only word die this month and it's best, straight to the point. This is After the Storm. And it's got some lovely, lovely, uplifting sentiments in it. And this is the stamp that we're going to use today for today's cards. This is BFF Girl Gang and this sentiment cracks me up. Here I made a little bit of a mess and did not put the stamp sets in the right order. Uh, this one is No Need to Tip and this sentiment is me to a T. Love that one. This one is uh, Cooking is Art. And yeah, what the fork is for dinner. <laughs> I have, it, it, it's very possible that both my husband and I mentioned that quite a few times. This is uh, the stencils for this month and they are fantastic as always. I love that there's always stencils in the releases now. It's just so fun. This cat is going to be fun because now I have cats. Oh, and this is what I do to keep track of what I need to do uh, in order to kind of keep on top of all my design team um, assignments. So I print off the sheet with all the names and then I highlight the stamp sets that I pick out to work with. And then I tick off um, everyone when I have um, created enough samples. But today we are going to look at uh, two cards that I am going to make with the After the Storm stamp set. I stamped up two um, slightly different with the black hybrid ink, uh, which is Copic friendly. I also stamped up one on um, watercolor paper and one on a mask. And then I used my super duper clever stamp scrubber to clean off this stamp set after. So we're going to jump straight into the coloring and I picked out some cool grays and some blues. And on this little bit of scrap paper, I have um, just kind of mixed and matched them all together to see, you know, which ones work. Because I wanted to create some really dark and dramatic clouds because, you know, it's one of the stamps that uh, or one of the sentiments say something like after the storm, look for the rainbows. So I wanted to make some really, really, like I said, almost angry clouds but we're gonna add blues to kind of make them electric blue so they're not just gonna be like dark and glary and thundery so here i have started with c7 uh, this is my darkest color i'm gonna go along some of the edges here just to create a little bit of depth and dimension and then I'm going to go in with um we're actually gonna skip some of the coloring because it is just coloring after our all, you know. But basically, we are gonna start with the darkest color and go around, as I said, some of the bits, not every single bit. And then we're gonna go in with C6 and then C5 um, and so on and so on. But as you can see on my little bit of scrap paper here, so this is C6 added and then that's the C5. And then after that, I decided to add B45 and then go in with C2 and then a little bit of C3, and then finish it off with B32. So with my little bit of scrap paper there on the side, I could kind of, you know, gauge what this was going to look like, but I didn't want all of the clouds to look exactly the same either. So I think I managed to achieve quite a fun, sort of vibrant look for clouds, you know. And then I picked out red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, and there's my eyebrow. Ooh. I need to probably change the angle of uh, how I'm filming when I'm coloring. Um, this is super, super simple coloring. I'm just using one marker for each sort of ray of the rainbow and just starting with a very light coloring at the top and then just adding a little bit more at the bottom to kind of just get slightly more vibrant. 
uh, coverage. But it really is so simple. One marker for each strand and that is it. Like those clouds, I I know I keep going on and on about it and harping on about it, but I just I really love how they turned out and they do look so much better in real life as well. It's such a shame that the video isn't actually picking up just how kind of alive they look because yeah, it just really worked out so well. And this is such a cool thing about the alcohol markers is that they all react together. So it is definitely worth it to have like a little bit of scrap paper if you don't want to uh, kind of mess up. Then we're going to hop into the second card here. And um, on this one, we're doing very similar coloring, but we're going to use lighter color. So the darkest of the gray is the C5 and we're going to completely skip out on the B45, which is the dark, dark blue color. And to finish off, to really add a lot of texture to these clouds, I've gone over very, very heavily, as you can see right now, with the C00 to just create a really, really textured look to the clouds. And then we're just going to add a little bit of a shade down there and just look at this. This is, this is what I mean with the, the sort of texture. And this is the, another cool thing about the alcohol markers. You use a lighter color on top of a dark and you get a really cool effect. For this rainbow, I wanted to use a slightly different sort of color scheme. So I have gone in with two markers of uh, for each sort of ray. And I've then used the same plus two more for the umbrella to create a fun umbrella look. I actually had an umbrella like this when I was a child. And I have willies in a very similar color to what I've given the little person on the bench there. But with that, because that is, you know, a one layer card, which I don't do very often, that card is done. So now we're going back to card number one. And at first I was like, oh, okay, what do I do now? But then I remembered, I have a mask. I did stamp up a mask, so I decided to use that. Give myself a little bit of a jig jig there too. Uh, when I cut out masks, I always cut out a, a little bit extra. So I don't leave any edge uh, around the sort of the black bits, if you see what I mean. So I go in and cut the mask so that you can actually see a little bit of the black uh, or the stamped up image behind the mask because that will ensure that your um, your entire image is covered and you will not have uh, any white space around your image when you've finished um, ink blending. But it is always worth, once, you've, once you're happy, it's always worth just taking that little bit of extra time to kind of make sure that you're happy. Then I grabbed a life changing blender brush, which had a very lush dark blue color on it already. I'm pretty sure that this is chipped sapphire, but don't hold me to that. But basically, I just wanted a super, super light covering of uh, color because the clouds are so dark and ominous already. I just wanted a little bit of like a, yeah, just want a little bit of color in the background as well. And now to the magic. Oh, I love this part of masking. It's just so much fun. I mean, I, we already know what's under there, but it's still, it's just so much fun to peeling off that mask and kind of seeing it all like happening. And um, yeah, I didn't do a super, super good job with the mask. As you can see that there's a tiny bit of white um, just above the rainbow and in the bottom right hand corner of the clouds. But I'm going to let that slide just this one time. Then um, to add a little bit more drama to my card, I am taking a little bit of golden rose paper glaze and mixing this with water. And ain't nobody saying nothing about that being an ice cream stick, please. Thank you. But they work very, very well for this. Oh, and um, always clean up your pots and try to uh, keep as much of your paper glaze from around the lid because it does dry very, very hard and it can make it um, slightly difficult to unscrew the top lid of your jar. And that is what it looks like when it's dry. Isn't that cool? So the paper glaze works for like an embellishment mousse for like almost like a crackle mousse. You can use it as watercolor. You can, oh, there's so many things you can do with it. It's such a versatile product and I love it. Now we're gonna work on a sentiment for that card. And I picked up a, um, a stamp set, oh, a stamp set, a sentiment. 
that says rainbow only form after a storm and hence the dark dramatic clouds. So I have used a little bit of poster tape here to just kind of mask off the rainbow because I wanted that to be in rainbow colors. So with my lush and lovely Atelier inks from Ink on 3, I am going to continuously mask off and add uh, each one of these colors for the rainbow bit as well. And you might notice that, and I feel like this is super, super clever, I am using the color that is coordinating with the ink to the rainbow. So it's gonna go from red, this um, first one is Marilyn red, and then it's marigold orange. Then it is bee sting yellow. And here we're gonna be fiffy faffing a little bit again. And then we're moving on to the green, which is goddess green, the blue, peacock blue, and the purple, which is my jam purple. And you can see how I'm using the same little bit of post-it tape to just kind of move, move it down so that you get a little bit of color for each one of the letters, plus a little bit more, just to, so it kind of blends in together quite nicely. And don't worry if you have to go back to add a little bit more. Um, it's just, it's super simple with the help of a Misty. So this is not something I would attempt without a stamping tool because I, um, I don't know, I, I kind of freak myself out and, uh, and get a little bit shaky and then the pressure, oh, the pressure. So yes, definitely use a stamping tool of some sort to achieve the best results and also the best results the first time around. And do remember to remove your post-it tape before you try to stamp. Ask me how I know that. But anyway, look at that. Isn't that cool? That definitely looks pretty awesome. So then um, I just cut that down or trimmed that down and uh, stuck it onto my card. And that was it. So apart from the fact that this little tiny banner sticks up, it's almost another one layer card. What is happening? I am usually not a one layer card at all. But... I managed to, and I must say that I really quite like these, uh, how these turned out and the stamp set or the sentiments in this set, is re they are just really, really lovely. But I will link everything down below and thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and maybe give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. See you soon again. Thanks for now. Bye bye.